So in this video, I'm going to be going through generating ideas, generating proposals, and this follows. I'm going to just quickly run through where I've been before. I put myself into this a little bit because um, I wanted to explain a couple of things in a bit more detail. Um, so we'll, we'll run through the PowerPoint. Remember, this is not a checklist of things that you have to complete in the order that they have to be uh, done in. This is this is the things that ought to be in a portfolio of work but there are plenty of other things that could go in there and you may well find that some of these things don't go into your portfolio depending on who you're talking to about um, about your controlled assessment, your NEA. Okay, so if we look at the first bit, section A is identifying, looking at the design context given by the exam board. In, the, in our case, we're looking at AQA, um, the 2018 one. I'm choosing healthy lifestyles as my um, model, which was from last year's GCSE, okay? Uh, I did some target market, I investigated the potential user, I ended up with young professionals with a little bit of money, and then I adapted that and I began to look at products that they might like and narrowed that down to kitchen equipment for young parents wanting to cook with their children to encourage healthy eating habits and healthy cooking habits. Okay, so I ended up with two possible areas, which was my step stool or utensils, and then I did a little bit of further research, that was my primary research and I asked questionnaires, I looked at websites that had information about why it's important to cook with children, uh, and then I looked at a particular user, in this case Lottie, and Lottie's mum as my specific target market. Next thing I moved on to was the uh, producing the design brief and the specification, and when I was doing the design brief and specification, it was turning the design context and the little bit of research that I'd done to start myself off into a brief which was the call to action. So design and make a prototype kitchen organiser that helps children between the ages of five to ten years to cook healthily. I then created my specification and I gave myself some next steps about testing materials, model making um, and how I was going to go about trying to make decisions. So that was my design specification. Modern, brightly coloured, less than £25, suitable for five to seven year olds, uh, durable environmental friendly materials, stored out of the way, about a drawer unit size, designing with safety of the child in mind, helps to organise equipment and prevent accidents. And then finally, materials such as stainless steel or bamboo in order to be hygienic and durable. Right, so when I was looking at those, the next thing I've got to do is to make sure that my designs begin to hit those. So that's where we began to look at um, being creative, innovative, taking care of function and how it looks. We thought about ongoing investigation. Remember, this is not a process where we go from one, two, three, four. You might have to go back and do a bit of research along the way. And um, imaginative use of different design strategies. Now, what I've shown you so far, that's quite standard, where uh, it's design sketches, it's interviews with people. Uh, I'm going to move slightly further into my design drawings today and, and look at model making in the video that follows that. I followed up a little bit of my research, if you remember, by looking at some products that were very similar to what I was intending to do. So I'd looked at existing utensils and existing hop-ups hop to help me uh, make some decisions. I then looked into some cooking kits and some cooking um, supports, some cooking aids. And this is ongoing. I'm still doing this a little bit but I've begun my design process now. Then I did some design sketch sheets. These are quite quick, rough ones. They're, they're the sort of diagrams that I, drawings that I would do if I was having a conversation with somebody, having a little bit of a chat and, and brainstorming some ideas. Um, and then I've summarized that. Now you might do summaries with each of your designs or you might choose to do it at the bottom. Uh, I tend to just point out key features of the design and then do a little bit of a written um, paragraph at the end. Then uh, subsequent design sheets, a follow-up one, um, thinking about maybe some areas at the front where waste peelings and stuff like that could be put. I've thought about cooking book stands, utensil holders. The more I think about this, the more I quite like the idea of there being somewhere to keep things contained, but also a way of removing waste peelings and, and flour and stuff, so like a scoop of some sort. I think that, that's probably gonna be in there somewhere. Um, I like the idea of it being modular where I've got bowls. So as I'm designing, I'm not going, okay, this is exactly what I'm making. I'm still trying different ideas out. Now, what I do in a minute is I'm going to take the notes that I've written here. I'm going to evaluate the products 
the designs that I've made and I'm going to select which ones I'm going to take forward. Okay, so they're my initial ideas. This is the important bit today. This is the, this is the new bit really. Okay, so what I'm doing is I've taken my specification. I've copied and pasted that into position there. I've uh, looked at each of my criteria and then I've written one, two, three, four, five to ten along the top. Now those represent, if I, if I go back a slide, those represent each of these drawings. Okay, So I've evaluated each one of my designs against each one of those criteria. Now the easiest way for me, I could have done that with numbers, I could have done that in all sorts of different ways. The easiest way for me was red, amber or green, where red really doesn't meet the criteria. Amber, probably, possibly, but not very well. And green is where there's a strong meeting of that specification. Now, bearing in mind that I did my design work thinking about my specification. So there's no surprise that quite a lot of my designs possibly would hit green. Hopefully it would, because that's my design thinking hitting the specification. Where I've got amber, I thought, well, maybe, maybe it will work, maybe it won't work. So um, it will be made from durable, environmentally friendly materials. Most of my designs, they're looking like they're probably going to be made using some sort of polymers. So some sort of plastic, probably a polypropylene or a polyethylene or something like that. I might see if I can make a wood version. Depending on how my product turns out, I might see if there's a wooden version as a possibility. Okay, And you can see down here, I'm again, I'm thinking about materials. And again, they're not really hitting it. The only one that does all the way through, number 10, actually is a pretty boring product. And although I'm going to look at it a little bit more, I, th I think it's probably going to be pushed to one side a little bit. So what I say, I, I've, I've summarised my table here. So I've evaluated each one. I've summarised what I've found out. I've then sort of paired them up. Where I think some of my designs are a little bit similar, I've paired them up and I've gone, right, I'm only going to look at that. I'm only going to incorporate those bits of those designs. So I've got three possible directions to travel. As I say, I'm not very confident about this third one. I'm not going to put a lot of effort into that at the moment, which is basically a roll-out bamboo um, mat. I think the top two are probably the most effective. But remember, this is about evaluating as you go. You don't stop evaluating. You don't stop writing notes all the way through your project. So what I've now done, I've taken those ideas and I've drawn them up in a little bit more detail. Remember, my first drawings were very, very rough, very quick sketches. My next pair of drawings I'm beginning to move closer to a, a, a presentation because I'm going to take these drawings to my client and I'm going to present them and I'm going to say, what do you think? So they have to be quite good. They have to communicate effectively. Okay, so this was the idea of the modular trays. Now, your designs, it depends on what you're making. You could be making a piece of furniture, you could be making a piece of graphics. I don't really know. Um, but when you're doing your designs now, I'm thinking, how do I get the information to my user, to my client? For me... That is minimum number of drawings to convey some ideas. So although they're both working on the modular tray system, each of these actually looks a little bit different. We've got a bowl holder, we've got a set of weighing scales, we've got a utensils holder. Right? I'm thinking about things that, that can be popped together, slotted together, clipped together, but I haven't really worked out how to do that yet. Okay? I've put some arrows on that show key points. So if I show Lottie and Lottie's mum, my target market, my designs, They've got plenty to talk about to give me some next steps or some directions forward. All right? If I was just showing them some really, really scruffy drawings, they might not understand what I was talking about. So I'm, I'm just putting a little bit more time into these. Okay, A little bit of evaluation at the end. Then my next one is these two. So these are more sheet metal that's bent and folded up and held in position. Um, I'm, I haven't shown you me drawing those um, just because I was kind of concentrating on my design rather than on recording it. But, but later on, we'll do some drawing techniques and stuff like that. Um, so I've summarised each of those. Now, what these are missing is measurements. What these are missing is real detail about the construction, how it's put together. I've started to talk about plastic brackets there, but I need to do some further investigation. For me now, I think the most important thing I can do is go into model making. I'm going to get some brown cardboard. I might cut up some cornflakes packets. I don't really know yet, and I'll start model making uh, these products at actual size. Now, depending on what you're making, you might model make to a scale. You might work in different materials. So mine are quite flat, I think. Um, so I could use cardboard really easily. If yours is three-dimensional, 
you're more likely to want to use something like blue foam um, or balsa wood or even sort of nets and developments in card to give you that 3D form. But my next video, I'll, I'll talk specifically about model making. I'm not yet at the point where I'm talking about developing ideas, okay? Because I don't think I've, I've made a final design decision yet. Um, so when I'm looking at my mark scheme, I'm not at the point where I'm developing ideas. This is still generating ideas. Uh, so this is the sort of the, the end bit. Once I've done my models, this is the end bit of those 20 marks for generating ideas. Uh, remember, when you're doing this, you can go right back to the beginning. You can scrub your ideas. You can you can step forward again if you want to and, and sort of launch straight into things. I'm personally, I'm desperate now to get into 3D modeling on CAD, um, but I'm holding myself back until I've spoken to my client to make sure that my product is right. Okay, so have a go at that. And then the next thing is going to be about developing. I'm just going to go back to my previous design. Remember, this this for me is the most important bit of today's video where we're looking at evaluating there's my specification there are each of my designs and then I red amber green and that allows me to make a decision about which ones I'm going to take forward into slightly better drawings okay so have fun with that